Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the 47th episode of the Working Musicians Podcast, where I am your host, Dryce Organica. And today's episode is brought to you by Budweiser. Not just any Budweiser, but Budweiser in the aluminum bottle. Because none of them were on sale, and I couldn't help but notice that like it's actually cheaper in the aluminum bottle when they're not on sale. So I got the 15 pack or something, or the get you through the next two days pack, or whatever they call it. I believe it's called the three day survival kit. <laughs> but I don't just have the one, you see. I also have another one ready to go. I love those aluminum bottles because, like, they stay cold for so long. It's wonderful. You know, uh, I, I highly recommend it if you have the means. I highly recommend it. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, yes, yes. So today's episode is uh, episode 47, and I, I've called it, uh, Does This Song Suck? And uh, the, the reason why I, I I decided to talk about this one is, this as an episode is because... Uh, you know, I've got a bunch of random songs that I'll make up, you know, and I'll, I'll have uh, on the back burner. But they're just, they're, they're songs that, I don't know, maybe they're okay. But they're just not something I'm that excited about. And sometimes I'll, I'll it's like they may have potential. I'll come back to them and I'll, I'll give them some more time and effort and they end up being great. And then, but more often than not, they just, I just never get around to it, and, you know. And I think because... And I think a lot of us have dealt with this in the past. It's like, just because you write a song doesn't mean it's good. You know what I mean? So you sit back and it's like, okay, is this really worth a while? So that's why I recommend everyone at least have like a a small interface of some kind and an ability to record your ideas and get them down so that you can listen back to it and get an idea as to whether this is actually good or not. And uh, I, I tell you, I find... That sometimes it just works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you find that it's like, geez, I'm just forcing this. You know, why am I doing this? Uh, you know, maybe I'd come back and, and you'll you'll find, hey, you know, this is cool. But at some point, uh, it's like you like parts of it, but you don't like other parts. And that's that's part of the process of, of writing professional sounding music. It's not just the process of recording with high end gear. That's so that's really not that as important as I think people seem to think. It's the, the whole concept of pre-production. I talk about pre-production a lot. And uh, this is an example of, of, of something that I've done. And I, I, I like to use my own examples, you know, not just to promote my stuff, because this, this one will probably never really hear the light of day outside of this episode. And it's not because I don't think it necessarily has potential, but the way I go about doing stuff is, if I don't think it's fantastic, I don't release it. You know what I mean? I'm not here, out here... Uh, I think kind of like my business model or what I, what I look at, I would rather release a four or five song EP than a full length LP, which half the stuff is just fluff material, you know? And that's what I'm afraid I might have written with this, this song. It's like, I'm not saying it doesn't necessarily have potential, but is it a hit? And I want every song I, that, that I produce and come out and that is heard, I want it to be that something that's great. And I, I just know that if I put out... Th- if I write 50 songs, you know what I mean? Okay, maybe 12, 12 or 20 of them. I, that, that's an album or two of material. But how much of them are really that good? And uh, I think it's just something we have to be honest with ourselves about. Is how good is our material, you know? So that's kind of the precursor to this. And I've got a little snippet of something I did a while back. And I was going back through my archives and listening to some stuff. Because, you know, I was uh, in a position where it's like... I tried to come home, like the kids to sleep, try to do some some practice, some singing, and they're like, ah, I'm just not in the right headspace. I'm tired. I've been drinking excessively. Like I have no vocals left. So for the whether you like it or not, there will not be a. Uh, a uh, <laughs> I'm not going to sing at the end of the, during this one. I just don't have the chops today. Hell, I can barely even talk. That's probably due to my friends at Budweiser and also uh, this brand called Black Scott. I don't know. I've never heard of them before, but I bought them at Specs because they're super cheap. 16 bucks for like a 12-year-old Scotch whiskey. Hey, granted, it's a blend. It's a blend. Don't, don't, it's not a single one. It's a blend. But hey, 
to me, it's not. It's about like drinking Johnny Walker Black Label, and it's uh, half the price. So, huh? You know, I took a gamble on something; it actually paid off for once. But you know, no risk, no reward, as they say. Oh yeah, there we go. Let me get this going. Gotta get this episode going. So. All right, just right quick, I just want to, you know, spend a second kind of talk about what's going on. Um, you know, I, I'm still on the fence about whether I'm going to do YouTube. I haven't even put any of these out officially yet. None of these have actually are even publicly viewable. So, and I'm kind of concerned as to whether I should even be doing these. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I feel uncomfortable with it, but maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Like, YouTube is a much more popular platform than my website for sure. Don't get me wrong, but I kind of wonder how viable is this show as a YouTube, a video cast, as opposed to just a sound only podcast. And that's, so that's that's the reality. I've had to, I've I've learned a lot of things. You know, I have to go about how my production value a little bit differently. I've got to I use a different microphone. You know, lots of things. I can't just go out here in my underwear. You know, granted, I'm not exactly a spruced up for this i don't really give that big of a shit but you know just it's, it's something on my mind and like uh one thing that doesn't always come through in in, in podcast versus video cast is that like the way you feel about things is just it, it's much more apparent when you see yourself on video and i i it's just ah that's something i'm kind of uh i'm afraid of you know i don't, I don't want want the way I feel about life in general to come through too much on this on this show because so it's really just sort of a uh, an intellectual dialogue into the the art of what it is to be a musician or a working musician or a musician that also works or what have you and it just it's just some, some kind of fun something to kind of keep you entertained on your way to work and back or just wherever chilling drinking a beer because not all of us have the luxury if I dare say luxury having a bunch of friends who are musicians and maybe that's something I'll, I'll do another episode about is is the value of friends when you're a musician and you know whether they're really valuable or not <laughs> you know what i mean Every, everyone wants to have friends but at the same time like how much is it really worth to you to have people who are your friends and so th that's something i think you know i'll probably get into that in another episode because if i were to do it right now I don't know. It's just I'm not in the headspace to tackle that. But what I am in the headspace to tackle is when you write a song and you get it, you know, you get it down on paper. Obviously, you know, when I'm going to play it to y'all, the performance is, is rough. It's just something I kind of quickly got down here. I, let me, I just wrote this. this I got some ideas. Let me record it. Hear it back. You know, play with it. Let me try some backup vocals. Let's put an extra guitar line in here. That, this, that, the other thing. I mean, just doing this on a quick production pre-production on the quick because get this stuff out there get it you know strike while the iron's hot while the ideas are fresh get the stuff out there while you're excited about doing this and that's basically what i did uh you know I, and I do this all the time i'm always preaching hey at the very least get yourself a microphone and a recording you know interface so that you can do this it is so worth it i mean what's a couple hundred bucks so that you can do this right and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just play a little snippet of uh, something I've done, and it's it's nothing special. It's right up the alley with what anybody could do. The quality wise, I didn't use anything special. In fact, I think I used my Audix i5, tried and true. You know, you know, I didn't. I don't think I used, but just my little Preasonus interface, preamps and converters, just stuck it in there and went. So this is an example of something I wrote, and I, I'm now that I'm listening back to it several months or who knows how long later, I kind of wonder is it really good? So. I don't know, judge for yourself, I've got my reservations. Get back to you. Oh. 
Okay, so there it is. Now I'm going to go back and make another render because for whatever reason this one's got glitches out the ass. I don't know why, but at any rate, shit. I'll, I'll re-render it and put the little snippet back in there. That's the cool thing about it. Even though it's... it's, I do this as if it were live. In reality, I, I record a live performance and then I broadcast it. So that's the cool thing is when stuff like this happens it's like i mean i i could probably get away with not even doing it it's not that bad but it's just like oh come on i hate it when there's artifacts or glitch like like you know little things it drives me nuts and i it's, it's a sign that i really need to update my computer but it's just like it, it gets the job done you know and it doesn't cost me any money you know that, that's great i'd much rather i mean if i have to i don't want to spend a couple hundred bucks to for a computer, I want to spend a couple hundred bucks and get like room treatment or another something, this, that, and anything. That's not, I don't want to buy another damn computer. I got other computers, it's just this is the one that's already here. It doesn't crash on me, it usually works. So, well, I have, I gotta say, I have had more problems since I've updated Reaper. Uh, what version am I on? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm on some kind of a newer version now. I gotta say, it does video much better. To the point where I can actually do video, but it has a few other problems. And I think the problem, if I were to just go freeze the track and go back, it would probably work just fine. So that's what I'm going to do to re render it, put this in there. But uh, you're not going to really hear the difference. But I just listen back, I'm like, oh god, it's glitching. But nonetheless, that's just a, a quick snippet of uh, a song I wrote. You know, I did a little pre production to it, just something, you know, in a night while goofing around. I wrote a song, recorded it, and like, hey, what? basically what a lot of people do, you, you write, and you're playing a guitar, you play along, you're singing along to it, and, you know, it's like you get to a certain point, so you re record the guitar line, you sing over it, and then you start playing with it, you know, let me, let's see what if happens if I add a backup line here, let's see what happens if I add an acoustic guitar rhythm track or a lead track, and that's basically what this is. Uh, it's not a lot of effort, it's just one night of working on something, and I haven't gone back and revisited it done anything or at the very least done anything to it i've listened to it but i haven't done anything to it and i think part of the reason why is i'm just like i don't know if this is really something i should be messing with i mean it's okay it's okay but i don't think it's going to change anyone's life by listening to it but and that's where it gets difficult is how prolific does everything you need to write need to be before you release it and that's, that's a tough thing to answer you know And what I'll say is, uh, I don't always have the answer to this. I scrap more material than I think I probably should. And I think a lot of the stuff I write, it's okay. And, you know, it might be a, it might be fine for like a, a soundtrack of a movie or something. You know, I mean, it's... But on its own merit, I'm not proud of it. It's okay. It might be a cool song to listen to. You know, it, it can be played, and it's, it's indistinguishable, but it, it's it's like it keeps you going, but it's okay. You know, you're not changing the station. You're not necessarily turning off the channel because it come on, came on, but you're not really digging it that much. It's just okay. It just keeps you going. And that's not what I'm about. I want something that really, really moves every single track. I want it to be like the coolest thing you've ever heard. I would rather l release a four-song EP where every track it just moves you. Versus a 15 track LP, and which is the same amount of good material on it, and the rest is just fluff. Like, why waste my time? Why waste the listener's time by listening to it? But I'll tell you, I've had a lot of other songs that, or a lot, I've had other songs that did make the final cut that started just like this. 
and somewhere along the way, you know, you have to make the uh, you got to make the decision: is this something I decide to work forward on? And I think that this song has potential, but I got to figure something out because I kind of like the intro. The intro is kind of cool, you know. Granted, the bass line, of course, I, I screwed that up. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to basically. It's like. Hey, that was probably like my second take at it. I'm like, okay, it's bad, but whatever. It gets the point across. I know what I'm trying to go for here. That's all that matters. They're just notes for myself so I can go back and mess with it later. Because I'm not going to remember what I played. But if I hear it, then yeah, I can go pick it back out again in a couple minutes and five minutes and figure it out. So for that, it's great. It, it helps me to remember what I played. Because if I had not recorded this, I wouldn't have remembered anything about this song. I wouldn't have remembered how to play it. I wouldn't have remembered anything. But I recorded it, and so I know I can go back and relearn it. wouldn't take long to get as bad a performance as what I just demonstrated. But there's one thing I don't like. I, I like the, uh, the intros okay. Uh, the chorus, I think, is really good. I like that chorus. I'm like, wow, this is cool. It's really moving, but the verse sucks. <laughs> there's just something. And maybe it's just my personal taste. And so something I might go out and do is like have a few people that I know and respect their opinions on, a handful of people, hey, this is where I'm at. Tell me what you like and what you don't like. And I think it's great if you have people whose opinions you value. And sometimes it's good to take people's opinions who are, you know, more young, like a lot younger. I like to find people who are a lot younger than me that listen to uh, the more modern music because I, I just don't connect to it like they will. And it, it kind of helps... I would rather, you know, people of a slightly younger generation than what my demographic, my target audience is, be able to appreciate it than more so than a, 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 the demographic who's a little bit older because the younger demographic is going to be around a little you know, longer and it, it helps keep me more relevant, more, uh, more, less, less out of date or, you know what I mean, less dated. And so I think you can get away with a lot of things so long as you're not too dated. And... I haven't had anyone listen to this one yet, but if I had to guess, I think that part partially like the verse is not good and I need to do some work on it to make it better. Partially other people that who aren't like, you know, people who do the kind of stuff I do, songwriters and the handful of stuff, people that say, Hey, would you mind just listening to your email? I sent a song, just listen to it. Tell me just if you don't whenever you get around to it, tell me what you think. And about those handful of people, they do what I do, so they kind of get how to listen through bad performances, whereas the average person may not be able to do that. But if I had to guess, they'd say like, it's okay, it's cool, you know, but it's not great. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel about it. But the chorus is really cool. It's just like, it might have potential, but it's just not there. And I agree. And I, I might ask you, what in particular is it the verse that you know that you think sucks? Because that's what I think. But other people may hear that verse and like, oh, that's really, actually, I really like the verse, but I freaking hated the chorus. If I send it out and four out of the four, five people say, no, the intro and verse is great, but the chorus sucks, and I feel the complete opposite way, you know, sure, I can still go back. You know, it's true what y'all think. This is my music, my vision, my art. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's, you know, that's fine. That's on me. And so, hey, they're not going to be upset with me. It's my art, whatever. They have no skin in the game. But at the same time, if I value and respect their opinions and all of them are basically telling me, hey, the chorus sucks, it, it, the song's got potential, but did, not the chorus, and I think that's the best part, maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think uh, people have a tendency to ask for opinions at the wrong stage of the process, you know? Don't record makes and master a song and then ask for people's opinions. That's the wrong time. It's right when, before, while you're still in the songwriting phase, that's when you ask for opinions. But people don't think about it like that. So this is a song I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out and get some feedback on. And maybe if I get around to it, I'll talk about what other people said. But, I mean, it's just, it's not too hard to say. say I mean, obviously the performances are bad. I need to work some things out. It, I think the song is okay. But at best, would it be the kind of stuff that would make a four, a four song EP or a five song EP? And that's where I got to, I don't know. Can I make this song good enough to be great? Does this song have the potential to be great? It has the potential to be like track five on a, or track nine on an album. And, but you know what I mean? It could make an album. 
but would it make an EP? And I'm not interested in writing albums. I'm here writing EPs because I'm not, I'm just not interested in writing music that doesn't move me. So one thing I think we ought to do is challenge ourselves to really challenge our own work and be like, is this good enough to be releasing? All right. Ask around, get opinions and, you know, go from there. So I'm going to try to start keeping these episodes shorter just to get them out and uh, not belabor them too much. But these are the kinds of things I want you to, somebody, you know, other people other than me to realize, hey, there are other people who are decent songwriters, musicians, recorders, engineers, whatever. And we're, we're all fighting the same fight. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Is this good enough to be releasing? And on this song, I, I, I it's still to be, who knows? I'll get back with you on it. But for right now, I don't know. I don't know if I can finish this song in a way to where I think it it's it would make a four it would make a you know the final cut on a four song EP. I think but I think it might have the potential, at least enough to where I will I will listen to it and I'll start playing around with it. But you know what? There's a lot of songs that don't even get this far up on my production list. You know, I play them, I listen back to them, I'm like, okay, that was cool, but next, I'm not gonna even waste my time. This song, I think, might have potential, but I've got to really come at it, I think, from a different way. It's a song that reminds me of a uh, one I did called uh, Likely Always. It was a cool song. I just couldn't, I struggled getting it to really translate at the level I wanted to. I tried different speeds, tried different instrumentation, all kinds of different backup vocals, added stuff, but I eventually chose to a very stripped down, very raw, just very... Uh, you know, slowed it down a little bit, made it much more intimate, and that's what worked. So I think what I need to do is rethink, you know, how I'm going about presenting the song, and I think that will make the difference. And who knows, maybe this will be one of my next songs. But that's the kind of dialogue that you have to have with yourself when you write stuff, because if you're not putting good stuff out, it doesn't matter what, whether you record it with a great studio with great people behind you, it still sucks. You can record a fart with a fancy microphone, but at the end of the day, it's still a fart. All right. Thank you all for listening, and I'll check you out next time. <laughs> Bye-bye.
Yeah, okay, for some reason my uh, camera stopped. So, hey, I'm figuring this out as we go. It, I think I was going for like, oh, 45 minutes before it finally crapped out. I mean, it, may, it might just be a matter of, hey, I'm running out of space on my hard drive on my phone. I've got a pretty good amount, but, I mean, these videos take a lot of space. So, uh, you know, maybe that's just the sign that I need to make shorter videos. I've, I've been thinking that for a while because – it's one thing to have an hour-long podcast. It's another thing to have an hour-long video cast. So I'm thinking maybe 30 minutes is where it needs to go. But, you know, only time will tell. This is all a work in progress. And let me tell you something else. Uploading videos is a bitch. It takes forever, man. It's just like, oh, rendering it takes forever. And it's, it's, it's getting to where it's like, man, this feels like work now. So I've got to figure out a way to do this to where it doesn't feel so, it's not so labor intensive. And not that it's even all that labor intensive. It's just, you set it, you forget it, you come back an hour, it's like, okay, it's done. You type in a description, eh, you know, but at least with the, the other one, it's like, it takes like 10 minutes, five minutes to upload, you know, some hundred megabyte file. It's not so bad. It rendering it, the, the, MP, rendering it to mp3 takes like two minutes rendering it to video takes like 25 and so maybe if i had a better computer you know but that's once again i'm not out i don't really i use my phone for most of my internet needs i have a laptop it's fine i've got a desktop it's fine they're all old they're not that powerful but they're good for what i need and at the end of the day why am i going to have it just so i can do video rendering quicker for something i don't make money on already <laughs> you know what i mean it doesn't make sense but that's just kind of how that goes. So at any rate, uh, you know, I guess just to kind of sum it all up, you know, why, why do we do it? Why do we do what we do when it comes to music? And I think it's a question we ask ourselves, but if, if we're to really, truly be honest, it's we do it because we love it. You know, we enjoy the part of ourselves that's brought out by doing something creative. It releases endorphins. It makes you feel better about yourself. It pushes you, um, you know, body, mind, and soul. Uh, I, I know it does for me, and I know it does for other people. It's uh, and it, I tell you, what, it is really a cool and special thing when you can connect with another person musically. And uh, I think the reason why I do it, and the reason why a lot of other people like me do it, is because it may not connect to that many people, but if you connect to one other person musically you've just basically connected to another person spiritually and it's a uh, without getting too you know uh voodoo on you you know it's kind of a cool feeling uh maybe a little odd at the same time but it's a uh, it's definitely nice to know that you can be on the same wavelength as another person and and i think that's kind of the, what motivates me and what motivates a lot of other people not everyone's going to like this show hey and I'm going to do some things, I think, to make it more accessible. And I think I need to do some things to make it more uh, <clears throat> mainstream, enjoyable. And I think probably getting it on the YouTube, having a face, you know, to go with the voice, that will help. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have a video for every podcast. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Maybe I should. And maybe I should do more of them, but do shorter ones. I'm not sure. But some things I know would be very difficult to do video-wise um, and make it make sense without having to do a lot of editing. And one of the big ones that's going to be hard to do is like if when I'm doing like a shootout or I'm having to play music and that kind of thing, that's kind of a hard thing to do on YouTube without putting in effort and having like software and me having to do a bunch of that kind of shit. And that's what I want to avoid. So it might be one of those things where like uh, I have a, I do something to where it's like, you know, I guess what I could do is just, you know, I've got my, my YouTube thing, but whenever I do that, it just kind of pauses with me going or, or just go, the screen goes blank with the intention that you're going to listen to something. Or I make a slideshow. I don't know, but it it won't be anything super awesome, you know, like me going to the screen and clicking on stuff. Uh, I I just I'm not interested in putting that much work into this, uh, especially on something that I'm not really making money on or don't. I'm not asking to, like I'm not asking for it. 
so I'm not giving it. You know what I mean? But I guess there's pro- where there's a will, there's a way. And I've with this mixing board and just a little bit of energy and some thought, I'm sure I can figure out a way to do it. But my video editing software consists of Windows Movie Maker, okay? So don't expect a whole lot. <laughs> I tried doing it on Reaper, just, uh, maybe it'll work better with using my cell phone camera because, oh man, there's just a whole level of complicated when it comes to video that uh, I just wasn't really prepared for. I, I gave myself a crash course and I failed. And I think it was because the piece of equipment I have was just not suitable for what I was trying to do. Maybe the cell phone is, but I'm not about to go buy a camera. I've got one of these big fancy DSLR cameras that I don't know how to use. It's my wife. She does it for her photography. And to be honest, I think at the point that I'm d- using that, like I've got to do the lights better. I kind of need somebody holding the cam, you know, messing with the camera. I'd have to have it on a tripod and it it would take, a, I would have to actually edit it and it would just take a lot of time. And I'm just not here to do that. Maybe at some point I will. I've got the ability to make really good videos. I've got the ability to make good sounding videos. What I don't have is the capacity or the drive to make really good videos. Hell, it's all I can do to just make content that doesn't suck ass. Yeah, all right, so you know, one thing at a time. I'm getting better at the content. I'm finally getting on the video on the YouTube. You know, so one thing at a time, guys. And just like the same thing. You know, let let what I'm doing be a guide for you if it helps. Or hey, you know, if there's here's another person trying to do this. Not to say you should do it like me, because this has not been a great success story. <laughs> You should probably find a better way, but it's okay. Just do what you want to do. Have fun, but don't lose track of why you do it. Why is it you do music? What is it about it? Stay focused on that and realize that if you want to do it on a bigger level, you're going to have to put some work into it, but that's okay. Don't lose focus and don't try to over overreach. Do what you can do and focus on doing that well and get better at it and practice it and gradually add more and more, uh, you know, perspective and more time and and, and more uh, resources and talent that you that you learn from doing this, and use it to benefit what you do, and not so much worry about oh I've got to make the greatest this that or the other thing and just focusing on that because all that does is distract you. Don't worry about how good your website is. Just get one. Make, is, is it effective? Cool. Does it translate a message for you? Cool. Can you find your music? Great. Now work on getting people to actually be able to find it. Okay. Work on that. Hey, I'm not saying go crazy. Just do what you can when you can to where it doesn't feel like you're working too hard. Figure out something that works and do that and do it for a while. All right. And then when it gets to where like, okay, this isn't working or I'm getting some level of success and you one thing leads to another is what I'm basically saying. Don't worry about what you can't do. Just focus on what you can and do it well and keep listening. Keep doing what you do. All right. It's been a pleasure having you here on the 44th episode of the Working Musicians Podcast. And I'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye.